The Defence Minister, Richard Marles, has flagged that he wants to significantly expand defence cooperation across the Pacific, starting with a security treaty with Papua New Guinea. Mr Marles is in PNG for a two-day trip and held talks with Prime Minister James Marape this morning in Port Moresby. Foreign Affairs reporter Stephen Jedgetts joins us now with more details. Hi, Stephen. Uh, what's the significance of this proposed security treaty with PNG? Well, the main significance here, Ros, is that it would elevate uh, the already fairly high level of existing cooperation between Australia and PNG on defence and security issues up a notch to a full treaty level agreement. Now, that will provide a framework not just to bear down existing cooperation, but also make it easier for Australia and Papua New Guinea to expand cooperation in other areas. Now, that might be, for example, expanding the already existing training programs that exist or offering new training opportunities. It might be Australia filling in what Mr Miles calls capability gaps in uh, Papua New Guinea's uh, existing uh, air, and, uh, air and ground forces. Uh, one idea that has been mooted uh, already is that Australia might make a contribution to effectively helping PNG stand up its own air force. Uh, or it might mean that Australia and PNG could expand defence cooperation in other areas as well. So it's not that there's no defence cooperation at the moment. Far from it. There's already extensive defence cooperation operation, but in an era of increasing competition, Australia wants to do everything possible to bear down its advantages and pr put itself permanently as the main partner of choice for security cooperation in the region. And striking a treaty with uh, PNG will do a lot uh, to, to effectively bear down those ties. Stephen, what other countries does Australia want to expand defence ties with? Well, pretty much all of the, the countries in the Pacific who have armed forces. Now, this is actually a bit of a, not a rarity in the Pacific, but it's probably more of an exception rather than a norm. Several Pacific Island countries uh, quite deliberately have chosen effectively not to stand up in armed forces. But there, there are exceptions to that, particularly PNG, uh, Fiji and also Tonga, uh, which, uh, which all have their own armed forces. Uh, so the scope of direct defence defence cooperation in the Pacific is a bit limited in that sense. Still, uh, when Mr Miles was asked uh, earlier today whether he'd like to sign similar treaty-level documents with those other Pacific countries that do have armed forces, uh, well, let's put it this way, he certainly didn't deny it. He said that uh, he'd like those relationships to, quote, evolve. So there does seem to be a really clear appetite here from Australia to expand its existing defence cooperation with these, uh, with these countries uh, to really make that uh, permanent uh, and, uh, and, and embedded in a treaty-level document. Uh, and also looking at new ways where Australia can not only basically offer new training opportunities, but also potentially hand over more equipment uh, to, uh, to defence uh, forces across the Pacific, going beyond the, uh, the patrol boats, which are already being handed over uh, to pretty much all Pacific Island nations. Again, this is a, a pretty clear statement of intent that we're getting here from the Defence Minister. So what's driving all of this, Stephen? Is it largely anxiety about China? Look, I think that's a big part of it. Uh, now, the Defence Minister has been asked about this and he denies that anxiety about China's growing uh, ties with the Pacific is the main driver here. He says it's better to look at it as a bilateral initiative from Australia aimed at trying to do everything possible to cement Australia's position in the region. Now, it's unsurprising that the government would want to frame this in positive rather than negative terms. Uh, it doesn't want to be seen to be simply acting reflexively in response to a Chinese threat. But I think it is undeniable that Australia Australia is uneasy about China's growing influence in the region and in particular it's uneasy about China's push to really expand security and particularly police cooperation uh, with the countries in the region. Now one of the ways that that's being expressed uh, is this push by Australia to really cement itself as the main defence partner in the region. There's a bit of anxiety that China, once it's actually managed to cement its position as a provider of police training in countries like Solomon Islands, that it might look to expand defence training or uh, defence ties as well. And that would have serious re repercussions for Australia. And I think in the end that is one of the main reasons that we're seeing this renewed push from Richard Miles and other members of the government uh, in terms of defence ties with the Pacific. Stephen, thank you.